Okay, we will start from here. Uh, we were talking about the alpha scattering experiment done by Kegar and Marston, and they were doing some good work and they published the result. Uh, but Rutherford, on the other hand, was having different idea. What he was thinking, he was thinking about the real mechanism, what is uh, happening inside the atom or inside the metal plate. So he was thinking why this is, uh, this uh, kind of scattering is happening. So you can see from here, there is another diagram which shows a somewhat advanced setup for this uh, gold uh, metal uh, alpha scattering experiment. We can have uh, a alpha source here, alpha particle source, and these alpha particles are uh, bombarded or, or inside on the metal, on the cold film, and most of them are undeflected, most of the particles are undeflected, and some particles are scattered with some uh, angle and uh, very few are uh, deflected back like this you can see and you can use any other uh, any other metal uh, plate here we use thin uh, gold foil gold is one of the best material to make it very thin you can make very thin layer that's why they have used uh, the gold uh, in here so and we, we are also having the circular fluorescent screen and this fluorescent screen will also detect these alpha particles which are coming uh, after this experiment that after scattering and deflection that can be uh, counted or recorded at different angles you can use uh, the detector here to see uh, the scintillation and uh, we can observe where is the maximum alpha particles are coming, where is the minimum, all those things we can record. Okay, this is a diagrammatic uh, representation of this uh, uh, gold uh, foil experiment. So uh, now what Rutherford was thinking was different because he was more interested in the real mechanism that is happening inside the atom. He was not uh, uh, interested in what happens to the material, uh, I mean in to the alpha scattering when the material is thickness is uh, increased or decreased or the material change or any such kind of uh, physical changes on the material or the experimental setup. He was not thinking, thinking about that. He was thinking about the fundamental physics that is happening inside the atom. And here is the reason. If you consider an atom, which is, uh, let's consider it is like a sphere, and we know if you are having a spherical charge distribution, uh, you have uh, uh, the electric field variation, uh, sorry, the electric field variation like, uh, like this, okay. So you are having your distance on the x-axis uh, and you are having electric field on the y-axis and this is your electric field variation with distance, okay. So let's say like this. So you will be having a maximum value at when R is equal to capital R and this capital R is nothing but your uh, radius of your spherical charge distribution. Okay, your maximum is at where the, the, the surface of uh, at the surface of your spherical charge distribution. That is the maximum electric field that we, you can observe. And uh, you can, uh, you, you also know that this will be proportional to R, that is the electric field in this region will be proportional to R. And in this region, it will be proportional to 1 by r square on this, this side. Okay. Now, Rutherford was thinking, what will be the electric field if you are having a charge distribution of the size of an atom? That means, if you are having a spherical 
uh, charge distribution of, uh, of an atomic size, then you can calculate what is the electric field that can be produced by such a charge distribution. And if you know the electric field, then you can calculate how much force it can exert on the alpha particle. So if you are having an electric field, let's say uh, E at the surface, then you can have a force F equal to uh, Q into E, where Q is the charge of alpha particle and E is the electric field that is uh, created or uh, produced by this spherical charge distribution. So this force will be exerted on the alpha particles when they have they come close to this uh, charge distribution. But when he calculated it is found that this electric field which is produced by this charge distribution of atomic size is not enough to deflect or scatter the alpha particle. The alpha particles are uh, massive as compared to other, uh, other particles like proton and neutron. So they cannot be uh, that much easily scattered. So he was thinking what will be the reason then? Then we again go to the electrodynamics. We can see your electric field is inversely proportional to uh, the radius of uh, the spherical distribution. Then if you are having a spherical charge distribution of very small radius, you will be having very strong electric field and vice versa. Then he concluded that there can be a region where all the charges are concentrated and this region is very, very small. And if you are having very small radius or the, your small charge distribution, then that can produce very huge electric field. When you are having huge electric field that can produce very large force on the alpha particle, then, then only it can scatter. Then he proposed his idea like this and it was like this. Uh, the center one is the, the, the charge distribution which is the uh, the nucleus that we call it as nucleus where these positive charges are concentrated and the outer one is nothing but the electrons. So now we have a region which is uh, very small where the charges are concentrated where you can have very large electric field and if you have very large electric field in the in that region we can have more force now if you are uh, sending any alpha particle let's say in this way it will not be affected in here it will not be affected but in here it can be affected a little bit and when you close further it can affect a little bit more like this so that is the idea of uh, Rutherford about the nucleus and his predictions were very accurate and he also calculated one important formula to calculate the number of scattered uh, uh, alpha particles that is uh, shown here. So this from this you can see the number of uh, alpha particles which are scattered is proportional to uh, the total charge of uh, nucleus and it is inversely proportional to the sine that is the fourth power of uh, sine of theta by 2 and it is also inversely proportional to the kinetic energy square that is square of this kind of energy. So this is th these are the three important factors we, we will be looking in this equation and if it is that much uh, important we will derive this equation. I, I think we have to consider only uh, these uh, important facts, what are the, uh, the, the three parameters, that is the three parameters which are important in this equation. So we will discuss uh, how these uh, parameters affect on the uh, scattering, alpha scattering.